What's poppin' people? It's Dante. Just wanted to make a reminder that there is no such thing as bad weather, right? So when you're practicing street photography, if it's raining outside, I mean, mostly it's a good excuse for me to cull through photos to do other tedious things um, that I otherwise wouldn't want to do on a regular day. But yeah, honestly, raincoats. Umbrellas. Vortex and uh, yeah you're good to go you know they, it's uh it's really simple I have a Rico GR there's no weather ceiling but if I pull the umbrella up points and shoots yeah I can use it one-handed so it's pretty simple oh check out this new technology I actually think this is so cool I can wave to unlock this door look at that it's pretty cool. This is uh, my underground walking place. I like to walk underground when it rains. You can sometimes find interesting things to photograph. Oh, and wear a hat. Rain doesn't get in your eyes. And uh, yeah, you're good to go. But um, yeah, a little bit of the Rico in the pocket. Do some rounds in the underground. I think. Uh, Morning. Yeah, I think photographing in low light is nice. And in all conditions, it can be a bit of a challenge. I think that there's some like trends within street photography when it's raining. You know, you see these like umbrella photos, moody sort of shots. I mean, I don't know how to avoid these trends because what happens when you're photographing is you kind of just shoot everything and then I guess through culling the work itself you can determine what you show or what you deem strong or successful. I think actually to transcend them requires you to shoot them actually. So like even if I see just like a single subject with an umbrella or a silhouette or something that is uh, usually seen as cliche during the rain or during any sort of like outing with my camera you know I'll photograph it but maybe there are some trends within street photography or photography generally that are worth avoiding so like when I think of rusty cars vintage abandoned buildings anything that's kind of nostalgic like blase portraits you know these like night sort of moody shots I don't know how to describe it but there are like these certain things that I guess are trends within street you know nowadays I don't look at them or really pay attention to them because I'm not on the online stuff like looking at photographs but there is something to be said about it and just like mentioning it um, even within street photography I think there's some trends that become popular like illusion photos juxtapositions, color matching, like these things can be interesting, but I think when they're contrived and maybe a little bit too forced, to me they're not interesting and maybe best to avoid. Um, honestly, with like studying photography, maybe it's best to just avoid it. Maybe it's better to go out there without any preconceived notions of what was done in the past. You know, if you can help yourself, um, by not looking at work, maybe it's best. The more I think about it and the more I go forward with uh, making new work, I just uh, try to remain in this like pure state of curiosity. You know, I have a few photo books at home. It's not like I'm oftentimes looking through them, to be honest with you. You know, I've studied some work in the past, but honestly, most of the time I'm just making work, right? So it's like 95% of the time I'm just photographing and then 5% of the time you know, before bed I'm calling or doing other stuff. And I think it's best to be this way, right? I think actually remaining in a pure state of curiosity, unadulterated from anything, right? So like disconnecting from Instagram, like deleting Instagram and these kind of things are actually uh, maybe wise. So you don't get clouded by what people determine to be a good or bad photograph. Whoa, check it out. The Dollar Tree. 
This is uh, my new art installation here in the Philadelphia Underground. Yeah, let's see if we can... Maybe I get the shot of me. Yeah, I think uh, when you're underground or in low light, it's best to just do uh, P mode. That's actually pretty cool. The lighting is nice. Um, yeah, let me switch to P mode. Yeah, I think uh, another thing is we get caught up with these basic uh, settings and technical things within photography, like sharpness, you know, settings, focusing, like, <laughs> I mean, really, like, all of these things, I think they're such a distraction. Like, for me, throwing the camera in P mode, putting the camera in a mode where the camera is my slave and I just have to click a button, I mean, it's really critical 